All right, so before we move on to talk about how to fight Genjus and Tracers, I just want to give a couple of general pointers uh, when it comes to how to play Zenyatta offensively. And first of them is just try to oh, snipe yeah, the supports. Yeah. You know, you have no damage fall off at any range. So try to snipe them, try to go for them, because it can really open the fight if you can get that pick. And there you go. They are top right, as you know, usually people are on this map. And I just spam two shots, three shots, Anna's dead. That's a beautiful kill that and it allows the snowball. And right here, look at this, I'm 52% ult charge and I want to have my ult this fight. So I, I just want to spam tanks. I want to spam some tanks as quickly as possible so I can get my ult charge up to hopefully around 90% because that's what, what I want. And there you go, there's D.Va. Shooting D.Va. She was alone, no one to protect her, you know, I isolated her from, you know, we as a group, we isolated her and this is the target I, I was looking for. And it allows me to get my ult charge to look at this, 87%, that's 35% ult charge gained in less than 10 seconds. This is beautiful, this is exactly what I wanted and as we make this final push, I'm gonna have trance ready, which is, which is great. Here, you know, let's talk about static targets a bit. Orisa, when, when she uses her shift ability, she's basically a static target. So that, that's how uh, slowly she moves. And when you see that, you just want to well, you just want to aim for the head. Because don't aim for the... I see a lot of players aim for the body when, when there's static target. And why would you do that? You know, there's a static, static character immobilized by a junk trap, frozen, or just Orisa that's really slow. You can easily get those headshots and they really can't. So go for headshots. You know, it, they were really easy to hit, so go for them. It's 120 damage, it's worth it. Let's keep it alive. We hit Tracer Genji. And same here, this May is gonna freeze the Winston. And as I notice that Winston is frozen, I immediately move my crosshair to his head. Get those easy headshots. And we dispatched him quicker quicker. That's what you want. And here's just a just a spam, you know, when Rain has his shield up, it's, it's better to use your primary fire. To because when he gets it down, you know, some Reinhardts just kinda flash the shield, then hide it, flash the shield, hide it to preserve it. And with the primary fire, some of your orbs are gonna go through when rains do that. And hopefully you can catch some people with it, just like I did here. I cut Anna, which is a very precious pick. And that's just abusing the, the spam, knowing where to spam, and, and yeah. Okay, so let's let's talk about tracers. There are three keys, in my opinion, to fighting tracers. One of them is being aware where they are. There you go, there's a tracer. I was actively looking for her. I found her, I killed her. And that's what you want to do, be aware where the tracer is. Same here. I heard her blink here. I didn't see her, I just heard. But I am aware, I'm looking for, for those cues as to where the tracer is. And I immediately charge my shot. I'm ready. You know, if I wasn't careful, she would just flank me and one clip me. So this is, this is one of the first keys. The second key is getting the initial hit. You know, when you locate a tracer and she comes for you, getting the first hit is really important because it swings the fight. It it puts the tracer on the defensive, and that's what you want. You know, she is forced to recall or escape, and you know these are all wins for you. If she recalls, if she escapes, if this is this is a win. Okay, here she jumps me. Mercy, uh, it's really. You know, nice play, healing me, and not just escaping as they sometimes do. And now I can just, I hit the tracer in the head, which is, as I said, initial hit. She is forced to escape to the health pack. I track her with my discord. She's gonna be coming right here. Because she, she just wanna leave. But I won't let her. There you go. Charge shot. I missed some of them, but she is forced to recall. And another thing is, just kind of be aware when she's gonna recall to. You know, after you kind of play 
against tracers or as a tracer, you're gonna get an idea where you're gonna recall. And I know she's gonna recall here, somewhere here. So I immediately just spam this area because that's where she recalls and there you go. That's a kill. All right here, another key to, to fighting tracer in my opinion is just knowing the blink distance approximately. Like when she blinks like this, I am aware and I know approximately when she's going to end up so I can flick immediately and get that kill. There you go. This is not really an aim chat. This is just a reaction uh, flick, you know, because I just know where she's going to end up. Messi's land? And same here. I'm just going to know. Can I focus Messi? Peak middle. Nice. Oh, that was my death. The Divas land? There you go. The tracer is right there behind this, this cover and she will blink here. And blink is seven meters, and I know this. So she's not gonna be behind me. She's not gonna be in front of me. She's gonna be on the side. So look, I'm gonna immediately, she's gonna blink, and I'm just gonna flip. In the general direction. And there you go, that's a kill. Lucy on points. Alright, uh, nice. There we go. Oh, yeah. Now same here, this is just again being aware of the tracers, you know, my whole team is not aware where she is, I am, and it falls on me as a zen to deal with her. I have the tools, I know where she is, you know, and this is this is a fight in my favor in my opinion. When you know where the tracer is, this is a fight in your favor, you shouldn't lose this. You know, the whole uh, tracer advantage comes from the fact that she just surprises people and, you know, she gets a tremendous amount of damage before you even know what's happening. So if you can take that away, that's great. And right here, you know, this is before the, you know, the map just started. This is the poke face in the little room in the middle. And, you know, tracers usually flank to the right. And there you go. She is coming the short way. She is either coming all the way behind through our little room with the mega, or she's just taking the short path here. I'm ready for it. I predicted that. I'm ready with the church chat, followed up by the melee. She's dead. Being aware again and, and anticipating where the tracers are. Again, awareness. I heard the tracer. I immediately moved back, uh, turned back. Initial hit, headshot. She, I didn't even give her time to recall, which is exactly what you want to do. But again, awareness is the first and major step. But again, as for fighting tracers, this is a fight. My Winston jump jumped out. I am alone with this tracer and just take this fight. Sleep. Don't be afraid. I, I get the hit. I'm forcing her to get some healing. And now I know she's in this little room. She's going to be coming out. I can ready my church chat and kill her. There you go. But just, just don't be afraid. Just take that fight. It's a winnable fight. All right. So Genji's Genji's is similar. Genji is similar to tracers. Uh, you know, there are still the, the same two keys apply. At first, be aware where, where he is. So you can you, you don't get jumped and second is get the initial hit to force him on the defensive. And there you go, he's there, double jumping, double jumping. I got the headshot and he just is on the defensive, he has to escape. You know, when Genji just fr it, frontal attacks from Genjis are not really uh, dangerous, you know, all you have to worry about is him just sneaking behind or just dashing when you're low. <laughs> So here again, it's it's the initial hit. I know he's coming. Initial hit, headshot, and I'm sure he's gonna deflect now because you know he is below half HP. He has to deflect. He has. To, he's on the defensive. He's gonna escape. I stop shooting. Once the deflect is down, I just finish him off. Okay, here this is, and this is the last key, the third key to fighting Genji's, in my opinion. Just take away his uh, his tools, and look. I'm baiting him into a little enclosed area when he can't double jump, when he when his dash won't cover as much space. And there you go, I'm baiting the deflect by flashing my charge shot and then cancelling it by melee. Which is okay. another tool is taken away from him. No mobility, no deflect. This is an easy fight for me right now. There you go. No problem. And you know, as for ulting Genjis, just just try to shoot them. You know, no point escaping, he's gonna catch up to you. And you know, there is this little window of opportunity when he unsheaths his sword and when, when he hides it. 
uh, he can't deflect, he can't do nothing during that period, so try to get the shots in during that little, you know, window of opportunity. There you go, and again, Genjis when they ult and in general when they play, they double jump, so it's one and then two. It's a very predictable movement pattern, you can abuse it, you can follow uh, the double jump movement pattern with your crosshair track it. Just predict that, you know, he's gonna land right now. I'm gonna move my crosshair down, because he's landing, right? There you go, when he lands, my crosshair's already there. Headshot, he's dead, you know. Just just track it. Just know what what he can do. Know his, his movement pattern. And same here. You know, this is gonna be a Nano Genji situation. And, and don't be... It's a huge uh, barrier by Lucio, by the way. But don't be afraid by the Genji, you know. There you go. The same pattern. Jump, jump. T back for good measure. Just don't be afraid, you know. You have nothing to lose. Hiding or trying to escape won't save you. You need to take that fight and hope that you can get those headshots in. Alright. Okay, same. This is this is baiting the deflect basically. Genji is after me. I'm charging my shot. He's deflecting. I'm not releasing that shot, Genji. I'm gonna cancel it and make you look stupid. There you go. And he is forced to escape. You know, he has no dash. He has no deflect. A good Genji will not engage you with his abilities on cooldown. And another thing when fighting Genji is you have to be aware as a team about his abilities. That's why it's important to communicate. You know, if you know that he has no dash, communicate Genji no dash. If he has no deflect, Genji no deflect. This is really important and especially as a Zenyatta player, you have to be aware whether he has his abilities on cooldown or not, because it changes how you approach the fight. How you approach the fight. If you know he has no deflect, you can just go crazy. You can just spam those shots and, and you know, there's no downside to it. But if he has deflect on, you're just always going to be anxious that he's going to put the deflect on and you're going to kill yourself. And here again, I'm going to bait the deflect. I'm not killing myself today. And Winston, huge play defending me. I almost died, but Winston came through. As for Farah, you know, my advice for Farah is just discord and forget. You know, don't really shoot Farah too much because it's just wasting time. Unless she's on you, then try to retaliate. But don't really fight Farah, you're just wasting time and Zen's uh, kit can be is way more useful when he's just actively doing damage to people on the ground like tanks mostly. You know, you're farming your charge that way and you you damaging opponents. And when you're just trying to hit Farah, you just you just miss him most of the time. You're probably not kill her because she has mercy on his or on, on her ass. So you just you're just wasting time. I wouldn't advise shooting Farah out of this guy, it's just too difficult. Discord. Listen to the soldier. Combo that, you know, Discord on Farah and then I get damage boost again. Yeah. Yeah, basically Discord on Farah and you know if he's even uh, boosted by Mercy the damage boosted it's it makes it really easy to put Farah and good Farahs will play way away from you. Look at this, she is so far away from me I can't even use the Discord. And also good Farahs what they'll do they would just they always play over. around the cover. So even if she gets hit by a headshot or whatever, she is just she is just two meters away from hiding again and just getting healed okay. by Mercy. That's basically it. So and again, as then it's it's not advised to fight fire. Unless she's coming for you, as I said, you know, your only hope then is just to hit those shots. And it's fairly easy to hit shots when Farah's on the ground and she's thrusting up. Because her movement pattern is really predictable. She just shoots into the sky and you can track it fairly easily and, and you know, connect some of these shots. And or just, you know, sometimes when you don't have anything better to do, just, you know, throw some orbs in her direction, hopefully. One of them is gonna be the headshot, which is exactly what we want. She is really low right now. Soldier should be able to mop her. There you go, her is dead. Okay, next up is soldiers. You know, the point with soldier is they usually uh, use the same tricks. They just gonna position themselves in the same spot. So, for instance, Gibraltar, soldiers are always on the plane or near the plane, you know, in point B. And you can abuse this fact by kind of preemptively shooting 
when you think they're going to be and just discarding them and telling your team to act on it. Like soldier on the plane, discard it. And it's a clear cue for your Winstons or Divas to just attack him, right? So be sure to do it. And and just spam the areas when the soldier is, as you saw, I just get a lucky headshot. But And again, here Hanamura, soldiers always on the left, either on the little uh, balcony or on the roof. Uh, knowing this, I'm just gonna go in there, charge my shot, shoot randomly, or just spam orbs. Because yeah, that, that's where soldiers are, and there you go, one shot in, discarded. Second shot in headshots, he's just, you know, 3 HP right now. Easy, Genji kill. But you need communication for that, because soldiers can be a major pain in the ass if you don't coordinate against him, because, you know, he's on a superior high ground, and he can really lay down fire on, on your entire team. And you can't let him do it. And as Zen, you have the tools to force him away from that position. Here on uh, point B on uh, Route 66, soldiers either on the gangwalk right here, or right there on the far corner here, just shooting on the ground from the high ground. And again, someone has to do it, and it's especially no. difficult when, you know, the payload is so close to, to the checkpoint, because everybody is just busy contesting, and soldiers just shooting for free, you know, so again, discording, directing your team in there, you know, telling them, okay, there's soldier there, please go kill him, and if nothing else okay, helps, contest, contest, contest. just try to, you know, do it yourself, try to shoot him, you know. I, I, I'm really tired of the soldier right now, and I'm just like, you know what, I'm gonna start shooting him. And there you go, I get a headshot, he, he's dead, we defended the point. So again, as for with the Genji ults and the soldier ults, don't run away from them, try to fight. Unless unless the cover is really close and you know you're gonna be saved, then run, but if not, then fight. Right? I hear the question, my friends, I know the soldier has ultimate, and he's gonna use it. There you go, got you in my sights. He's right here, I have nowhere to hide. I can try to escape around the back into this little room on the left, but he will catch me anyways. So, so all I can do is discard him and try to try to hit him. Like I miss, I fail, I miss, but there you go, that's a hit. Someone else was shooting and we were able to take him down. Relatively unscathed, only unedited, baby diva, that's not bad. Nice, then. Good aim. Right, against Symmetra, you know, I want to talk about Symmetra because Symmetras are cheeky and, and, you know, the way to fight Symmetra is just attack her. You know, look at this, she's, she's gonna come from behind. There we go, what Symmetras do is they're gonna project the shield and then they expect you just gonna be trying to run away because, you know, most people try to run away from Symmetra and that's a grave mistake, you don't run away from Symmetra. You move forward and you shoot her head. And I make it sound easy, but it is actually quite easy. Symmetra Symmetras are so full of themselves that they won't uh, crowd spam on the, or they won't AD spam. They're just going to run at you straight line, and it's an easy kill most of the time. But you have to move through the shield and close the gap. It's counterintuitive, but that's what you're supposed to do. Keep it one, keep it one. Keep it one. We just down, nice. And same here, you know, I know Symmetra's there, I don't want the teleporter, I'm just gonna rush her, I'm gonna attack the Sim. There you go. Alright, so that's it for the offensive clips, but I still wanna mention uh, Hanzo and Widow, and it's, that's gonna be really brief, just don't fight them. You know, at higher levels of play, they have superior aim, superior reaction time, and just don't fight them. It's not your job as Zenyatta to fight Widow, to duel Widow, you're gonna lose that duel. And okay, I also don't have any clips of Winston, but I think it's important to talk about Winston. When Winston jumps you, you want to avoid the area of impact where he jumps. You want to move away so he doesn't uh, get the damage from the jump pack, uh, you know, landing. And also when he jumps, don't, you know, the intuition, you know, suggests you just move away, try to escape, but don't do it. You know, go to your team. You know, wherever your team is, go there. Go through Winston if you have to. He's not going to do more damage if you get close to him, right? He's just going to do the same amount. And if you close in on your team, maybe there's going to be Lucio. Maybe there's going to be Soldier dropping a biotic field. And it's going to prolong your life. So don't escape from Winston. Sometimes move through them and rejoin your team. What Winston's want to do oftentimes is just try to separate people. So don't let him do that, you know? Just... Uh, 
try to go through it and rejoin your team and hopefully you can all take him down. Alright, so in regards to Tracer, I forgot to mention something pretty important, and that's a little trick that Tracer players use to, you know, just confuse enemy players, and especially Zenyatta. So the thing is, just look at this movement pattern, and this is the blink behind you, and then immediately forward again to where she began. And basically what it does, it forces you to uh, turn, to make a full turn, and then immediately turn back again. And some players have really low sensitivity, and what it means is they're gonna take extra time turning around and then turning back again. So what you wanna do is you don't wanna have too low of a sensitivity because then those tracers will really uh, prey on you and you know make you an easy target because of it. So it's something to keep in mind. Tracer players do that often. Um, just to, because it, it's pretty effective, it's nice uh, confusion tactics, so be ready for it. Just see it coming. Justice is done. And alright, quick word about positioning. Now, I won't really get into details about positioning, because it's really tricky to talk about it, because it all depends on who you have, uh, you know, your team composition, it all depends on their team compositions. Uh, on their tendencies as players, on the map you play on. So there's just so many factors to consider that it's impossible to give you like one cohesive uh, rule or a set of rules that, okay, on this map you should do this, this, and that, because it doesn't really work like that in a game like Overwatch that's really, really dynamic. So here what I want to showcase is just basically sticking to your main tank. Like, I'm just gonna use this D.Va as a body shield when they're gonna come in. Oh, Zen. Like, there you go. Okay. Alright, they come in, man. In D.Va, I always try to keep the D.Va right in front of me. Okay, she goes in, so now I'm alone. And their monkey is gonna, you know, immediately sense that and jump me. But, as I said, with the offense, uh, in the offense section, you know, when a... Uh, Monkey jumps you, sometimes what you want to do, I mean this now it's pretty obvious because he's behind me, but what you want to do is you want to rejoin your team. Whatever they are and whatever the monkey is, you just want to rejoin your team because then you have the biggest chances of surviving against the monkey. So just, you know, stick into your tanks, it's always a good idea. Uh, being near the other support of your team is also very good so you can take care of each other. You know, if they are attacked, then you help. If you are attacked, then they help. Now, this is on King's Road. This is not a bad spot, but then again, it's pretty. It's very safe. But when they rotate around the statue that's over here, uh, you won't be able really to shoot them because you just don't have the line sight. But it's a very safe spot, especially if you have a soldier. Sometimes it's good to hang with soldier because he can drop the biotic field, and you can, you know, again, you can uh, take care of each other. You know, it's important for Zenyatta to have someone to help you. And just by their presence. Like now here, this is uh, Hanamura point B. It's obviously a very good spot. It's where, where Ana players play, which is right here. Right in this area. Oh, this area. Because when someone attacks you, either from the right side or uh, jumping through the main gate, you can very quickly retreat to your spawn and you're invulnerable there. So you're gonna see Winston is gonna jump me. You know, desperate attack. Because he has enough of me, but this is a beautiful bait. May is here, McCree is here. I am protected. I can very quickly retreat, and he just doesn't have enough damage to kill me. So always, I guess you know, a golden rule when it comes to positioning is just being in a relatively safe spot, which is near cover, and you know, uh, ideally multiple cover and relatively close to any health source, whether it's your spawn or it's your health, it's, it's a health pack. Um, that, that's, I guess that's a very good rule of position. Like right here, I know they have a Sombras coming with EMP, so I'm playing way back. I get forcing her to either come right through the entire team and ult just me, or waste it on them. And I'll be able to help with friends that I'm gonna have on very soon. There we go. All right, now this is just maneuvering around cover and on Oasis. Uh, again, sticking to my tanks. 
to Diva. Diva's really good because she can matrix you, tracer jumps you, she can, you know, just put matrix on you, make you invulnerable for, uh, uh, you know, at least this few seconds. And right here, this nice cover is uh, just very friendly for Zenyatas. Because, you know, they're going to have a fire that's going to start shooting at me. And again, even if someone's shooting from the right side, I can quickly, you know, maneuver behind this and be fairly safe. And again, she I, she knows I'm here, she's going for me, but I'm near my team. And my team, you know, kind of acts as this protective factor for me. So if someone goes for me, they're going to deal, they're going to have to deal with multiple people, not only me, but my team as well. All right, and here this is uh, on uh, I can wall and that, that's what I'm talking about. Look, I'm hiding behind the payload. Like the main fight is happening right there. So if any damage is gonna come my way from here, I can hide behind the payload. If someone flanks here, I can hide behind the payload, and I can still impact the fight because I see all my dudes, and I can still shoot whoever's coming. And there you go. Look at this. I can quickly retreat here for a little health pack, or I can quickly move back to the house, and there's also a little health pack. So even if they have Farah that's going to rain from above, I can quickly move uh, under a roofed area and, and kind of cut her off. So again, I'm playing back, I'm in the back line, but I'm not... Uh, so far behind that I'm alone. I'm always near someone, you know, if this soldier drops a biotic field for me, I literally have one meter away till I reach it. So it's a, it's a, you have to know this fine balance between being back, but not too far back, but also not too far forward. Okay, now here this is just dodging the hook. You know, use the corners when you play against Rodok. Oh my god, this was... Use the corners to break the hook, you know, immediately, you know, pop in and out of cover all the time. And again, I'm here in this area, you know, Mercy's with me, so I'm safe. This monkey just wasted his jump. There's also little health pack right here, so I'm really, really safe right here. And this is just, you know, obviously when diva bombs go off and, you know, you're in a fairly open area. Use the payload. The payload blocks uh, bombs, diva bombs, at least. <laughs> Alright, here again, this is a good spot, especially someone's always gonna come through here. And so just turn the shot, shoot at them, but also, you know, stay with the team, you know, if we were to defend from there, high ground, but on the right side, I would be there, I wouldn't be here. So this is again, just stick with your team, it's, it's, it's really basic. Nothing really to say here, and this is a very safe spot for... Uh, King's Row if you have if you play near another support because look at this Lucio play is gonna be beautiful monkey jumps us and Lucio is gonna boop him away and this is what I'm talking about when I mean supports taking care of each other if your support is really dedicated to helping you out when you get jumped and vice versa it's gonna be really easy for the really difficult for the enemy team to get kills on you and especially for players, for Winston players who, uh, you know, have a hard time uh, fighting more than more than one person. So again, uh, beautiful boop by Lucio. Thank you. Man. And look at this. He comes again, and Lucio boops him again. So you know, keeping me safe, I'm keeping him safe, and and that's the trade.